Hello, my name is John Schmidt and I'm the Electoral Commissioner for New South Wales. The 2023 New South Wales state election involves over 5 million electors and it will be one of the biggest single community events held in New South Wales in 2023. We established more than 300 early voting centres and more than 2,500 voting centres across New South Wales on election day. We also employ more than 20,000 people to assist in conducting the elections. These webinars are intended to assist registered political parties, candidates, scrutineers and other political participants by explaining relevant processes, procedures and compliance obligations for the election. However, I must stress that the content of these webinars is not a substitute for the law. While the New South Wales Electoral Commission will provide information, it does not provide legal advice. If political participants are in doubt about any legal matters regarding the election, they should seek their own independent legal advice. I and everyone at the New South Wales Electoral Commission looks forward to delivering the 2023 New South Wales state elections with transparency, integrity, fairness and safety. I hope you find these webinars both informative and engaging. Good morning and welcome to our candidate information webinar. Today we'll be talking to you about electoral material, compliance and voting with regards to the 2023 New South Wales state election. My name's Amber King and I'm the Nominations and Electoral Material Team Lead and today I'm joined with Andrea Sumrall, our Acting Executive Director, Elections. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we work today and the Aboriginal people participating in this webinar. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and recognise the diversity of the Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of New South Wales. Today we will be taking questions and we will, we will work, um, we'll respond to your questions as they're received or towards the end of today's webinar. If you do have any questions or anything you would like to ask us, um, you're able to join at slido.com and use hashtag New South Wales State Election. Alternatively, you are able to use the QR code displayed on the screen. If you do experience any technical difficulties, please SMS 0417 176 075 for assistance. Now you can see on the screen, um, just to provide you an overview of the New South Wales state election, um, just an indication of the scale of the election event for, um, for 2023. Um, now I have shown this to you previously through um, other webinars. I would just like to highlight um, there has been a slight increase to some of those numbers um, and in some instances they have um, been slightly amended down. Now, while I'll be focusing on key dates regarding electoral material and voting um, with you today, I'd just like to remind you of um, some key dates for the election. Now, as you are aware, lodgements of nominations commenced on the 27th of February and will close at 12 noon, Wednesday the 8th of March. The issue of writ will occur on Monday the 6th of March um, and that's the date for which an elector must be enrolled for the purposes of nominating for the election. So if you are going to be a candidate, you do need to ensure your enrolment details are up to date. Or if you have a nominator nominating you as a candidate, again, it is important that their enrolment details are up to date by 6pm this coming Monday, Monday the 6th of March. The ballot paper draw will be conducted at 10 a.m. Thursday the 9th of March and that will be conducted in the Election Manager's Office for the Legislative Assembly and for the Legislative Council uh, ballot paper draw. We'll be conducting that here at the New South Wales Electoral Commission and you can find further detail regarding the ballot paper draws on our website. And then I'll walk through um, in detail 
the dates regarding electoral material and voting as we work through today's webinar. And as you are aware, election day is Saturday the 25th of March. Now just to um, touch on nominations, you are able to lodge your nominations now and we do encourage any candidates or legislative council groups that have not lodged their nomination to lodge them with us um, earlier rather than later. You're able to lodge that using the nomination online management system um, which is available on our website or alternatively um, by using a paper nomination form and you're able, the venues for which your nominations can be lodged is listed and available on our website or please don't hesitate to call us on the candidate help desk if you would like further information or advice on your options available to you. Some important points regarding nominations and I have been through these previously with you but um, just as a reminder we do encourage you to lodge your nominations um, as soon as possible. It allows us the opportunity to process your nominations or your request to form a group and in the instance there is any deficiencies with your nomination form, it'll allow you time to correct your nomination and have that re-lodged with us prior to 12 noon nomination day, Wednesday the 8th of March. We do ask or encourage our candidates to provide us contact details we can use to communicate with the candidate. We will communicate with the candidates um, through the nomination process but also um, up to election day and following the election with regards to results. We will make sure we include our communications to our registered political parties, the registered officers and deputy registered officers. So we will keep everybody informed, um, but we do encourage you to also provide us your candidate contact details. And just a reminder that late nominations or nomination deposits will not be accepted after 12 noon nomination day. Now to talk about electoral material, you can see on the screen, screen now the timetable with regards to electoral material. The regulated period will commence on Monday the 6th of March. The registration of electoral material system will be available to participants on our website following the conduct of the ballot paper draw on Thursday the 9th of March. We will provide ballot paper templates, so these are um, samples or copies of the ballot papers that will be used on election day or to, for voters to vote to assist you in preparing your electoral material. So you're able to use those templates on your electoral material if, it's, if, it, if it assists to help you in your preparation. The display of electoral material. So any electoral material registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission will be displayed on our website from Monday the 13th of March and the registration of electoral material closes at 5 p.m. Friday the 17th of March. Now what is electoral material? Electoral material is anything including um, how to vote cards or material that's distributed on election day or prior to the election. It may be tangible or electronic. Electoral material is any electoral matter that is likely to um, affect the result of the election or capable of influencing the way an elector votes in the election. The regulated election, election period commences on Monday the 6th of March as I've mentioned and it goes until 6pm election day Saturday the 25th of March. Through the regulated period um, participants are required to meet the legislative requirements defined within the Electoral Act 2017. Now I'm going to talk through some of those requirements with you now. The requirements include all electoral material must include the authorizer's details. Now the authorizer's details is the name of an individual who has authorized the preparation or printing of electoral material. So you're, you're required to include on your electoral material the authorizer's name and address. They can be found at during business hours. The address of, an in, um, the, the address of a registered political party in the instance the material has been prepared by a registered political party and that address needs to be the address of the registered political party as per the list of registered parties. 
your printer's details. So you're required to include your printer's name and address in the instance you're printing your electoral material. And I'd just like to remind you, you're not, in, you're not able to use a PO box for either your authorizer's details or your printer's details. Okay, so we need a street address in both instances displayed on that electoral material. Electoral material distributed on election day is, requir is required to be registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Um, we have, again, on our website, we will have the ballot paper templates available to you and the system will be available for you to register your electoral material from um, Thursday the 9th of March. The registered electoral material will be displayed on our website from Monday the 13th. And we do encourage our participants to register their electoral material as early as possible. Again, it'll provide us an opportunity to process your electoral material and come back to you in the instance you do need to have any corrections made to that electoral material prior to the close of registration of electoral material. We would like to encourage all participants to um, provide accessible electoral material as we will be making it available for, for electors on our website. We do encourage you to make your electoral material accessible. And we do have on our website a guide to assist you in preparing your electoral material. We will be um, encouraging electors who are voting by non-attendance also to view your electoral material online. So again, if you're able to register your material early or as early as possible, we will publish this and provide that opportunity to the voters to be able to view your electoral material. Electoral material distributed before, electri uh, before election day does not need to be registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission. However, it is important to note that your electoral material is still required to meet those same legislative requirements. So if you are distributing electoral material prior to election day, you still need to include the authorizer's details, so their name, street address, and the printer's details. Again, the name of your printer and the street address. Electoral material distributed on election day is required to be registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission. It is an offence to distribute electoral material on election day if it has not been registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Now, some electoral material does not need to be registered, um, does not require the authorisation and does not need to be registered with the New South Wales Electoral Commission in the instance it is being distributed on election day. Now that includes um, your candidate workers t-shirts, um, maybe balloons that you may distribute at a voting centre or pens, um, other items that do not need to have, do not need to be registered or have the authorisation details includes business cards or general political commentary that may be included on a website. Now there is further information available about this on our website and included on the Candidate Handbook if you do have any questions or would like further information. Now I would like to bring to your attention the requirement of including authorisation on your social media platforms. Now with regards to social media, if you are posting um, on your social media where there is no amount paid or you're not boosting your, um, any, boosting your posts on a media platform, you're required to include the authorizer's details on, on your social media. And I've got some samples for you for, um, for Facebook, Instagram. Um, however, and that's your authorizer's details. So again, you need to put the name and address of whoever's authorizing that social media account or post. However, if your electoral material is boosted or you make a payment with regards to um, on, on your social media for boosting a, a post, you are required to include the authorization on each individual post. So again, I've got a sample to show that to you, but I would like to remind you that we have included information regarding the authorization of social media in a bulletin that we distributed 
in February. And again, we have more information available on this um, in our candidate handbook and on our website. So you'll see here our samples. Now I've got a Facebook example here for you where there is no paid amount and the, the posts have not been boosted. You're able to include the authorizer's details in the about or the introduction section on that um, account. And again here, where there's no paid amount, you're able to include the authorization in the information section on the Instagram example. And again, on Twitter. However, in the instance of a paid or a boosted post, you're required to include the authorization on each individual post. So you can, in, you can do that by including it on potentially the image or the graphic. Um, in the instance you have a video um, or a simulation, again, you need to make sure you display the authorizer's details and that must be displayed for a minimum of three seconds. And you can see here where you have a website, um, the authorizer's details have been placed at the bottom of that page there. Um, if, yeah. Yeah, so available for everyone for, to, to see, see. Yeah, on that page. Now with regards to our automated telephone calls or text messages, the authorization is required to be spoken in the instance of a robocall and where you are sending an SMS text message, the authorization is required to be included. That can be included in the individual text message or in a subsequent text message that is required to be immediately sent afterwards. Contravention to including the authorization in either a phone call or a text message is a criminal offence. Now there is electoral advertising blackout on both radio and TV. So any political advertising on radio and television must cease at midnight Wednesday prior to the election. The electoral advertisements on radio and television are regulated by the Commonwealth Broadcasting Services Act. This legislation is not administered by the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Electoral advertisements on radio and television is regulated by the Australian Communications and Media Authorities. Distribution of electoral material on election, day, on election day cannot be distributed or displayed inside an early voting centre or a voting centre. Electoral material or posters cannot be displayed or handed out within six metres to the entry of a voting centre. And again, I've got some samples to show you. A person cannot canvass or solicit votes of an elector for a particular candidate using a loudspeaker or a sound system that could be heard within an early voting centre or a voting centre. And you'll see here the samples or images. In the instance you have a voting centre or an early voting centre that gets attached to another building or another premise, the six metres is defined from the entry to the individual voting centre. So you're not, candidate workers are not able to be within that six metres distributing electoral material and the posters are not able to be displayed within that six metres to the entry of a venue. And again, where we have a standalone premise, the six metres is defined from the entry to the voting centre and our candidate workers and our posters are outside that, that area once again. Now display of posters without permission. The Electoral Act prohibits the display of posters on a premise or within a premise without the owner or occupier's permission. Owners may arrange or may remove posters displayed without their approval or permission and the New South Wales Police may also remove any posters in breach of the Act. Posters placed within six metres to the entry of an early voting centre or voting centre will be removed by the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Now I would like to bring to your attention that we have been advised by Osgrid and Essential Energy 
that posters are not to be displayed on power poles. They have advised us that they will be removing any posters displayed on power poles and that they will be charging the political participants in the instance they are required to remove any posters from power poles. We have also been in discussions with Department of Education and they have asked that political participants do not display posters at a voting centre prior to 4.30pm Friday prior to election day. So we do encourage you to speak to your candidate workers and the people that will be helping you display your posters at a voting centre on election day and encourage them that posters are not to be displayed and that they do not dis attend a voting centre before 4.30pm Friday prior to election day. Now the recycling of electoral material. Your, your candidate workers are not able to remove electoral material from rubbish bins within a voting centre. If you would like to recycle your electoral material, we encourage you to ask your electors to bring that back out and hand that back to you. Participants will not be able to remove anything from our garbage bins within a voting centre. It is important to remember that electoral material must not be, be misleading to an elector. So your electoral material must not contain voting directions that may, may mislead an elector in casting an informal vote. Your electoral material is not able to mislead an elector with regards to the name of a party or use the word independent and the name of a registered party um, in a way that suggests a candidate is associated with a registered political party or that a registered a candidate affiliated with a registered political party is an independent candidate. The instructions on your electoral material must be in line with the instructions of the ballot paper. You are not allowed to um, provide instructions to an elector contrary to that of the ballot paper. So you're not allowed to encourage an elector to use ticks or crosses um, when casting their vote. There are numerous criminal offences with regards to campaigning in an election and that includes the misleading statements on how to cast a vote which I've just touched on, the canvassing of votes um, in a voting centre, the distributing of electoral material that is not registered for on election day or that does not meet the legislative requirements and does not include the authorisation or printer's details whether it be distributed on election day or prior to election day through the regulated period. Or distribute electoral material that may look like it's dis being distributed by the New South Wales Electoral Commission. Any allegations about unlawful electoral material should be directed to candidates at elections.nsw.gov.au. We do encourage you in the instance you are forwarding something through to us to include the URL in the instance it's a website or a social media account or include a copy of the electoral material if you have any concerns so that we're able to see that in line with your correspondence. And alternatively, please don't hesitate to contact the Candidate Help Desk um, to discuss any of your, um, your concerns or allegations. Now the website has a number of resources available for participants in preparing their electoral material. There is a simulation or a simulated video to assist you in using the registration of electoral material system. The ballot paper templates that will be available following the conduct of the ballot paper draw which I've touched on earlier today. There's the social media and website examples which I have shown you today. We have the candidate handbook. There's a, um, a, a re video regarding the registration of electoral material, a guide to preparing accessible electoral material, and again, please, you've got the candidate help desk, and please don't hesitate to contact us if you do have any queries. Now, the registration of electoral material system. The registration of electoral material system will be available on our website 
following the conduct of the ballot paper draw and we do encourage you to use the registration of electoral material system when registering your electoral material for distribution on election day. The advantages of using the registration of electoral material system, it provides you a, um, it's quite an easy system to use, quite intuitive, but it'll provide you an overview of your electoral material and the progress of your electoral material and processing. It will allow you to lodge and view electoral material. And in the instance you need to, you're able to withdraw your electoral material using the online system. It also allows you the opportunity to select which material you would like to have available in your declared facilities for each district and um, also indicate whether or not your material is accessible and gives you the opportunity to provide any translation documentation. Now I'd just like to touch on the voice referendum. Now any electoral expenditure incurred during the election period in respect to the referendum for the voice may be subject to the New South Wales electoral funding and electoral material rules. The Electoral Funding Act does not exclude electoral expenditure incurred in relation to the referendum from the definition of electoral expenditure. Any electoral expenditure incurred on advertising or other material that mentions the voice referendum up to election day, which includes the name or a representation of the New South Wales Party or a candidate, is considered to be electoral material and is considered to be included as electoral expenditure. Now if you do have any questions regarding this, please do not hesitate to contact us and we will provide further information about this. Now I'd like to hand over to Andrea to provide information regarding your voting options and um, up to election day. Thank you, Amber. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through some of the high level um, voting information that will be available for the upcoming 2023 state election. So there are a number of voting options available to electors. Um, firstly, I'll cover off in-person voting. So electors can vote in person uh, at an early voting centre during the early voting period. Uh, there is eligibility criteria that applies uh, that you'll need to meet to be able to cast an early vote. All electors are able to vote on election day and there's, um, as we saw from those figures uh, in the slide that Amber showed, there will be um, almost two and a half thousand voting centres across uh, New South Wales where electors can vote and that information is available on our website now where you can search via your address and see where your closest voting centres are. There will be interstate voting uh, centres established in the week prior to the election from the 20th of March. For those electors who um, happen to be in capital cities of other states across Australia. And if electors uh, find themselves in New Zealand, there will be some, uh, in, some voting options there for them to attend again in that week leading up to the election. Um, and for New Zealand, that will be in um, Auckland, uh, Wellington and Christchurch. Now, postal voting is, um, applications are open now and people can apply to postal vote if they're unable to vote on election day. They will have to indicate um, why they can't vote on election day, but there is a number of criteria that they may meet. Uh, applications will remain open until 6pm on, uh, on the 20th of March, the Monday before election day, and we expect packs to be um, distributed from the 13th of March. Telephone assisted voting uh, is available to electors who are blind or have low vision. And again, I'll go through those dates um, in a, a later slide. A call out that uh, there is no internet voting available for this election. So we'll look at the early voting options and the key dates for that period. So early voting will commence uh, from the 18th of March for the majority of venues across New South Wales. Telephone voting, as I, as I mentioned, is available to electors who are blind or have low vision, and that will be available from the 20th of March, the Monday before election day. 
the early voting period, I think we just got an um, error there on the, the screen. The early voting period um, finishes on the 24th of March, so the day before election day, and, and that will be at 6 p.m. So early voting centres will be established in every district across New South Wales. As I said, it commences from the 18th of March, but in those interstate capital cities, it is from the 20th of March through to the Friday before election day. Now, it's important to note that not all early voting centres will operate for the full period of that early voting period. However, it is the majority of early voting centres. But if you go onto our website, um, and as I said, search via your address, you'll see the early voting centres um, listed there, and it'll include the dates of operation and the times of operation. One call out is that there is no early voting available on the Sunday 19th of March. So available on the 18th, and then again from the Monday the 20th. Early voting eligibility remains uh, the same as with previous state elections, um, and it's the same eligibility requirements that exist for postal voting. Uh, the eligibility reasons are available on our website um, and are also included in the candidate handbook for your reference. In relation to postal voting, um, a written declaration is required, or if you use our online postal vote system, the declaration will um, be made through that online portal. Um, and when an elector goes to vote in an early voting centre, um, as I mentioned, there is criteria um, uh, to identify that you're eligible to vote early, and that is done through a verbal declaration that the elector makes. There's a lot of information available on our website about the different voting streams and it would be important to familiarise yourself so you can support the electors in your area and make sure that your support teams um, also access their information. So they are giving out um, accurate information about postal voting, uh, early voting options, how to complete uh, electors ballot papers and it's also important to note that since the 2019 state election, there has been a redistribution. So some electors may find that um, the boundaries of their district has changed, meaning that they're in a different district or their district name may have changed. So electors can, as I said, use the um, Find My Electorate uh, search on our website and get the information about what is current for 2023. We're aware that in some areas, local government councils um, in New South Wales, there are electors who, due to flooding in their area, may find that they um, are in temporary housing or have been displaced because of the, um, the flood. So we wanted to call out for those electors what their voting options were. So an elector who finds themselves in an outside of their district, they are able to uh, apply for a postal vote. And during that application process, you can identify that you would like your postal pack sent to an address other than your enrolled address. Uh, electors who um, are temporarily outside of their district can also take advantage of an absent declaration vote. So electors uh, voting outside their district are able to cast a vote at any early voting centre or voting centre um, via an absent declaration vote, which means that you'll be completing a declaration um, but are then able to be issued with the ballot papers for your enrolled district. And a reminder, if you have changed address and now reside in a different district, then the roles for this election, as Amber pointed out, close at 6 p.m. on Monday, 6 of March. So electors can update their uh, address details via the Australian Electoral Commission or through links from our website to make sure that their new address is listed um, on our printed authorised roles. So as I mentioned, the postal vote um, voting uh, key dates are that the postal vote application period has already commenced. So our online postal vote application is the easiest way to apply. You can do that direct from our website. 
that allows you to do um, the eligibility check, make sure that the information is included um, to ensure your pack gets sent to the address that you want it to be sent to. Um, and you will be able to have that information passed straight through to our system um, and approved and then ready for when we're able to start distributing those postal packs, which doesn't happen till the 13th of March. So we can't distribute the postal packs until we have closed the nomination period, had our ballot paper drawers complete um, and had the printed ballot papers um, available. So those first packs will go out and then continue to be um, dispatched through um, the, the week um, and a half following that. 20th of March, the Monday before election day, as I said, is the close of applications. That occurs at 6 p.m. So that is the last um, date on which a person can apply to vote by post for this election. Now, if you are completing a postal vote, it's important to note that uh, you must complete your postal ballot and your um, postal vote certificate by 6 p.m. on election day. However, then you have until the 6th of April to return that pack and have it received by the New South Wales Electoral Commission in order for it to be included in the count. Telephone assisted voting uh, available for uh, the upcoming state election, but only to electors who are blind or have low vision. So electors can apply through the New South Wales Electoral Commission and they will make a declaration that they meet the eligibility criteria. And applications are available from Monday the 20th of March through to Friday 24th of March. And then the second process of voting using telephone assisted voting is available from the, um, the 20th of March also, but it will close at 1 p.m. on election day, the 25th of March. Before I go on to the next, oops, process Amber, um, I just wanted to call out our options for overseas electors mm -hmm. as well. So overseas electors are able to also uh, assist, uh, to able to vote um, using postal voting. Mm -hmm. And their options are, so they apply for postal vote and we encourage any electors who are overseas to apply as early as possible. Um, and then we can send their postal vote pack uh, to their nominated address overseas. And then they have two options. So they can return their postal vote to the New South Wales Electoral Commission direct mm -hmm or they have the option to hand deliver that postal vote to a number of uh, overseas postal drop-off locations that we've established. So around 10 or so. Mm -hmm. The cities um, in which that option will be available are listed on our website at the moment um, and further address details will be available for those drop-off locations in the period where the drop-off could occur, which is in that week before election day. So we've got the postal vote applications available online. Yep. So anyone overseas is able to complete that. Um, we'll obviously then distribute the postal vote packs um, and then they either post it, post to it us. directly to us or they can drop it off in one of these locations. If they happen to be um, living in, in, in one, one of those, of those cities. Centers. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and we are encourage, as I said before, interstate remote electors and overseas electors uh, to apply as early as possible. And we're doing a lot of social media to get that message out because we want to make sure we get that, um, those packs out as quickly as possible to those electors, noting that it could take some time for that pack to reach them. And then we also obviously need to get those packs back here. Again, that and that's the 6th, the of, 6th April. of April. Yes, yeah, so, so same de um, timeline for overseas okay. electors. Now, Andrea, before you jump on through, um, one of the things I would like to remind um, the people participating today is if you do have any questions, you can visit us or ask those questions through slido.com and you're able to use the hashtag, hashtag New South Wales State Election, and we'll be able to answer those inquiries for you today. Great. Yeah. And they can do that whenever they, the question comes up. They yeah. don't have to wait till the end. No, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to draw your attention to um, some activities we're doing around electoral integrity. 
So the New South Wales Electoral Commission has established on its website an integrity hub. Um, so there's lots of good information about the work we're doing um, and some of those key integrity activities that we're undertaking. Um, so via that integrity hub, electors can um, access information about our stop and consider campaign, which I'll speak to in, a mo in the moment. Um, we're also making sure that um, all of our pre-election disclosures are being published regularly. That um, provides electors and other um, stakeholders with information about um, the activities that are being undertaken. Compliance audits, investigations and prosecutions are all activities that support the integrity of the election. And we're also making sure that we are providing as much information as possible so um, electors and political participants are aware of the um, requirements under our legislation. Mm -hmm. So um, information like fact sheets, um, webinars, uh, information via the candidate handbook or help um, you know, support those that education and, and provide guidance so everyone knows how they can comply with the legislation. And we've also got those videos, Andrew, you've mentioned before, and I think we've got another slide on it afterwards, that assists also the electors in their, their roles and responsibilities and understanding what they can also do. Yeah, they're great videos. Um, really, they focus on um, particular areas and quite easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So they could also be shared with, um, if political participants have support teams, mm -hmm. um, a good way to get some information across easily. Um, on that Integrity Hub, you can also see our regulatory priorities. So you can look at what the Commission is, um, uh, is focusing on for the coming year. Now, Andrea, this one here just before, we have touched on this before. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have that disinformation register on our website. Um, and it, we've got a few new, more items that have been added to that by the looks of it as well. Yes, yeah, so as we've mentioned before, the disinformation register um, is around uh, us providing accurate information around the electoral process. Um, so as we have said before, um, if we are advised or we note that there is information about the electoral process that's incorrect, then we have the register which is able to correct some of the information. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a source of truth for electors to, um, to know what is the accurate information. So we have a few examples up on the register um, w that we've got listed here. So we've now got four items uh, that is on that register. And you can see the, the topics around um, ensuring that people are aware that um, an elector does not need to be vaccinated in order to cast their vote mm -hmm. um, is one of the examples. Um, information around the security that we maintain in relation to um, postal packs. Uh, the redistribution of electoral boundaries, um, how that process is undertaken, and some information about the security measures that we have around ballot boxes at early voting centres. Mm -hmm. So more detail can be found on the disinformation register, which you can access through that integrity hub. So as I said, the New South Wales Electoral Commission is uh, working on a stop is is has been pushing out a stop and consider campaign so that campaign has now launched and many people would be aware of the similar campaign um, through the federal election mm -hmm. that the australian electoral commission um, led and so same concept and and we've used the same um, terms around stop and consider and it's around electors making sure that the information they're accessing is reliable it's current and it's safe. So we want to make sure that electors know um, when they're looking at information around um, voting that they have the most reliable information and that is, um, is driven by the information on our website, candidate handbooks, mm -hmm. all of that information. Um, so you'll see some of our social um, uh, media campaigns on this um, Stop and Consider campaign coming out now. Another call out in relation to how um, the integrity of the election um, is maintained is through our compliance operations that um, happen throughout the election period. So we have specialised investigators and teams that um, p participate in our field operations, mm -hmm. going out to our voting venues, um, both during the early voting period and on election day. 
Um, and we also uh, work with our election managers to make sure that um, they have the information uh, to be able to respond to compliance issues um, and they're supported through our head office and our candidate help desk um, to support that um, those operations. And also we have a head office that um, works very closely with the candidate help mm -hmm. desk um, to make sure that they monitor and review any compliance matters that are brought to them. Um, and that includes anything that comes through on social media. So some of those compliance matters, um, Andrea, is around you know the entry to our voting centres, whether it be early voting or election yeah, day voting centres. the six metre rule that we were metres, talking about. And also that soliciting for votes, that. Um, a candidate worker is not able to solicit for votes or distribute electoral material um, within a voting centre um, through that period as well. Yes, that's right. So, important job that they do. Um, I guess the call out here is that we do have limited resources mm -hmm. that we can apply to these operations. Um, so there's some principles that um, when we're looking at responding to breaches or allegations that we consider um, in working out, you know, what the focus is for that team. So um, you can see the, the three key points there around urgency and mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. um, do we have the resources available? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Um, and also, that um, any action that we take is proportionate to the seriousness of the of the, the breach that's been raised. Mm -hmm. So that's just to provide some guidelines to how um, we assess where we our focus is with the limited resources mm -hmm. that we have available. Now. Um, as we've mentioned, we do encourage you to contact the Candidate Help Desk and you can see here that we've also, we've, you've got the Candidate Help Desk phone number, but you can also um, gather more information by visiting our website or by contacting us through the Contact Us page on our website. We do have um, a few remaining webinars that we will hold as we lead up to the election and then following election day. So our next webinar will be regards to candidate workers and scrutineers. And we do encourage you, if you do know who will be assisting you with these activities for the election, that you do um, invite them or encourage them to register. We will be walking through the role of um, and responsibilities of both candidate workers and scrutineers. But um, as Andrea mentioned, it will also be including some of that education. So if, they, if you do have people assisting you that have not done it before or are not familiar, we will be walking through um, their role, but also trying to provide a bit of information or education to be able to assist them um, in these activities. And then we'll be holding a webinar regarding counting and results. And then following the election, our final webinar for the New South Wales state election will be regard to the disclosure um, responsibilities and requirements for the participants. So um, the links to register for each of those webinar webinars are now available on our website. And as we've mentioned before, we will be streaming the Legislative Council ballot paper draw. You are able to attend the Legislative Council ballot paper draw in person. If you're not able to, you are able to view it um, online. And in the instance you would like to see the Legislative Assembly ballot paper drawers, I'd just like to remind you they will be conducted in your election manager's office um, for the district for which the candidates are contesting. And that information is available on our website um, and they will be held from 10 a.m. next Thursday, the 9th of March. And then we will also be um, conducting the Legislative Council distribution of preferences. So Amber, the, the streaming mm -hmm. of the ballot paper draw, that's only for the Legislative Council. If people want to view the Legislative Assembly ballot draw, it'll, it's an in-person event. It is in-person, yep. so they're able to go to the office, but the Legislative Council is also an in-person, mm -hmm. so it's up to the individual yeah. Um, yeah, which way they would like to do that. Um, but I would like to remind you that if you don't make the ballot paper draws, our website will be updated. It'll be updated after the conduct of the ballot paper draws in each of those areas. And the candidates will be displayed following the conduct of the ballot paper draw. Um, at this point in time, candidate details are not displayed, Andrea, um, and they won't be published until the, the conduct of the ballot paper draw. We'll display the candidates in order of the ballot paper draw, and we'll also provide you um, further candidate details that the candidates have given us to release um, to our electors. 
Now again, you can see here a list of those explainer and awareness videos. So Andrea has touched on that earlier today, so I won't go through it again, but you are able to view them on our website. Now, Andrea, we haven't received any questions today. I, I think this is the first. Yeah, we must have covered off everything very Cut well. Yeah. Oh, oh. There we go. Um, so the first question has come through. Is, um, yeah, do we need to register posters, posters to be displayed at polling places? So posters do not need to be registered, um, whether they're displayed through the early voting um, period or on election day. The only thing that needs to be registered is material that's going to be distributed on election day. But your posters still need to contain your authorised and printed details? That's right. Yeah. So you need to make sure you've got the authorizer's name and address and the printer's details. And again, the printer's name and address. Um, and that cannot be the PO, PO box details. Yeah. But um, so any of your electoral material prior to the um, election day doesn't have to be registered but all electoral material, whether it be social media, posters, or that distributed, has to include the authorizer's details and anything printed has to have those printer's details. Yeah, great. Now, if you do have any questions or anything further you think of throughout the day or as we lead into the election, please do not hesitate to contact us. And we do thank you for taking time out of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you.